you know, I don't think of you in this vein. Apparently, neither did Steve Carell think of you as a funny guy. Right. Are you a funny guy? Um, well, I've been trying to, you know, I've been trying to say that for a long time now. No one will listen. But you made him listen. He's a producer, and you got cast. Um, yeah. Well, I, you know, I actually worked with Steve a long time ago. One of the first things that I um, uh, got when I moved to Hollywood, I was 17, and I got a part in a pilot that Steve was in. We both had small parts, and we didn't get to work together. But I was so like, enamored with him that I would go to set to watch him work. Really. And. I remember one time I was watching him, and he was so funny that the boom operator threw down the boom. It just had, like, this laughing fit in the corner. And it was the first time I'd ever worked with someone that was so good it was a problem. His really? talent was disruptive. <laughs> and I just Did thought, it happen with Justin Timberlake or uh, Britney Spears? No. No, there's no one like Steve. So I thought, well, I have to work with this guy one day. And then he got on The Daily Show, so I watched him all the time. Then I watched all his movies. I mean, I even loved him in that Over the Hedge movie yep. when he played that squirrel that liked energy drinks. And I just thought, well, I, I, if I ever get a chance, so this this opportunity came, I had to do it. All right, so you have an unusual job in mm -hmm. this movie. You mm -hmm. kind of have to tell you describe it. Um, well, He's just bordering on loser, and you have mm -hmm. to shape him up. Well, I would say that they're both bordering on losers. You know, my character is thinks he's got it all figured out. He's read all the men's magazines. He thinks he's doing everything he's supposed to be doing. He's wearing all the things that are in fashion. He's got all the, you know, he's doing all the exercises he's supposed to do. He's got the house. He's got it all, and yet he's not happy. And um, he meets Steve's character, who's uh, on uh, on the opposite end of the spectrum, but 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 equally as unhappy. And so they strike up this this friendship, this odd friendship. All right, so you know what they want me to ask you about, don't you? What's that? What's the craziest, stupid thing I ever did for love? Were you Photoshopped? Yes. No. Yeah. It's actually, it's a program that James Cameron has come up with. It's called Avatar. <laughs> and you just put on this, like, jumpsuit, and there's, like, six ping pong balls. And then when you do scenes, you suddenly, magically have muscles. You're not telling me the truth. You're lying don't, to me, Ryan Gosling. I'm not. I'm not you I would mean, never. Don't lie. I would never lie to you. Are you going to show me your abs? I don't have any ab muscles. Let me be the judge of that. I don't. Well, can you buy me a drink first or something? <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> um, all right. They also want me to ask you about the scene <laughs> where you're in the gym. We had that scene to debut on Access Hollywood. Ryan is naked in the gym with Steve. His naked crotch is in his face. Okay. What was it like <laughs> shooting that scene? You know which was scene I mean. Yeah, I yeah, I remember it. <laughs> I've been reminded of it a few times today. Yeah. What was it like to shoot it? Was uh, were you really naked? That, well, I think. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, I was I was co I was covered. Uh, you know, at times, most of the time. But it was funny. I don't know. I guess. Look, if you have to lose your comedic virginity, you want to lose it to Steve Carell. Great. He's he's very gentle. What is the craziest thing you ever did for me? <laughs> there you go. Back to it. Well, I, you know, I'd love to tell you, but I just we just met again. And in time, I'll tell you those things I when that's not on. Okay. I have to tell you. But I'd love to tell you, but that's on. That's not, so I can't. I love the intimacy of the scene of you two in bed. It was just uh, so natural and so sweet. And, I mean, every note was right in this movie. The music was right. The intimacy was right. And then I read that you had lived a lot of it. Mm. Tell me about how that worked. Well, basically the directors are like the two old guys from The Muppet Show, and they just would sit behind the monitor and heckle. And they would say, boring, be funnier, uh, surprise me. So we started having to uh, come up with, um, you know, more material. And they told us on that day when I worked with Emma that we were just going to basically have the night free, and they were just going to film whatever happened. So uh, um, that's what we did. We just, yeah. We just went with it.